Hi, I'm Polly Saltonstall, editor of Maine Boats, Homes and Harbors magazine. Like most of you, our staff is hunkered down and working from home these days, but we want to stay in touch with you and with the boat builders and artisans who make our state special. So welcome to a special new feature, Maine Boats, Homes and Harbors at Home. We'll be checking in with some of our favorite boat builders and others to learn about their projects. We welcome your feedback. Keep in touch and we'll see you on the water. Some of the most modern concepts are made possible by the past. Take the Wheeler Yacht, being built at Brooklyn Boatyard. It's a sleek modern boat, but the lines were inspired by a classic fishing launch. Project manager Eric Stockinger tells us more. A modern interpretation of Hemingway's renowned fishing boat Pilar, a Wheeler 38 Playmate, is underway here in Maine. Crafted from wood to the same dimensions as the original boat, but using cold molded construction and cutting edge innovations like digital switching and gyroscopic stabilization, Brooklyn Boatyard is currently constructing this new spirit of tradition powerboat. Designed by Bill Prince, the boat is being built for the new Wheeler Yacht Company, started by the grandson of Pilar's original designer and builder as an homage to the original company. The Wheeler 38 is a cold molded wooden boat built using many traditional techniques in tandem with the latest in modern epoxy and vacuum bag construction. This combination gives the boat the look and feel of a classic with the strength and security of a modern vessel. The hull is built upside down over a mold comprised of bulkheads and frames. The stem is constructed of many thin layers of clear vertical grain Douglas fir laminated around a jig. The structural integrity of this particular design relies not only on frames and bulkheads, but also upon the stringers and beams running fore and aft. All the structural members of the Wheeler 38 are built from clear, vertical grain Douglas fir. Once all the main longitudinal pieces were attached to the mold, they had to be fared, an important step involving a lot of handwork. The bottom planking consists of four layers of quarter-inch mahogany plywood. The top sides, including the transom, have three layers. The transom is installed first. Once the entire boat is planked, the outer stem can be installed and shaped, and another round of fairing begins. Next, a light layer of fiberglass cloth is vacuum bagged over the entire hull. This layer is not structural, but rather it gives the paint a solid base layer and improves the overall durability of the hull. After the fiberglass, a series of high-build epoxy-based fairing primers are sprayed onto the hull, each of which is sanded by hand with long boards to remove any slight imperfections. The hull is now ready for paint. With the hull flipped right side up, the second phase of work can begin. Deck beams and carlins are fit, and the subdeck is laid down. Meanwhile, the interior spaces are marked out, the subsole is fit, and work begins on the interior carpentry. The boat's systems are also starting to go in. Fuel tanks, mufflers, filters, a generator, and eventually the twin 370 horsepower turbo diesel engines are bolted in place. The drive shafts are lined up and installed. With the engine room finished, the cockpit subdeck is laid down and work begins on finishing out the cockpit furniture. With all this happening on the hull itself, elsewhere in the shop, the deck house is being built. The structure will be fully assembled and mostly finished painted before being lowered onto the deck with the help of an overhead crane. Once the house is attached, the teak deck can be laid. Finally, the pilot house is built off boat in pieces to be assembled in place over the deck house and cockpit. This build has presented more than a few unique challenges. It was important for the owner that the lines and overall size of the boat be the same as the 1930s original. Our task then included fitting in two larger modern engines, a generator, a large gyroscopic stabilizer, a state-of-the-art electronics package, and all the other modern comforts of a 21st century power yacht. We also had to keep as much of the feel and style of the original boat while at the same time modernizing it. This meant hiding most of the new technology wherever possible and constantly referencing historical photographs, making sure to hold on to just the right amount of original details, both large and small. This is the type of project that everyone at Brooklyn Boatyard, myself included, love to get a chance to be a part of. Yes, there are always obstacles, time crunches, etc. But in the end, I just know this is going to be an incredible boat. This is the kind of project people remember working on. I think this is a boat that the builders will talk about for a long time, and that says a lot.